get started then. So here's what we're going to be looking at today. To begin with, we'll consider the four sources of space radiation. And then we'll look at what protects the Earth itself. We'll investigate the three key problems that electronic systems face because of the high energy particle environment. And this breaks down to uh, single event effects. And also we'll consider how do you test for that. And we'll think also about the total ionizing dose and total non-ionizing dose. And also how we can predict the system downtime as a consequence of space radiation. But before we jump in fully, we'll actually have the first one of our quizzes. Okay, so, and here it comes. Um, you should see it on your screen now. There you go, okay. Only a few seconds to answer. Okay, so Telstar 1 is probably best known as the first communication satellite to bring live TV signals from the United States across to Europe. Launched back in 1962, what I'd like to know is how long was it operational for? Was it seven months, three years and 10 months, 11 years and two months, or is it still operational now? Okay, shall we see what people say? And, and Paul. Well, okay, so it looks like most people got it right. Yes, a mere seven months. Uh, the backstory as to why that's the case might surprise you. The day before Telstar 1 was launched, the first of the high altitude nuclear uh, bomb tests took place. And that, of course, filled the environment with additional radioactivity in addition to that, which is present uh, normally because of the sun. So sadly, the poor thing only lasted a mere seven months, and it was then to be the first of many. So let's have a look at the natural sources of space radiation. It comes down to four things. The solar wind. The solar wind is a constant emission of particles specifically from our sun. It comprises mostly of protons and electrons, although, as we shall see, there are many other things in it as well. The second contributor are the galactic cosmic rays. These are high energy pro uh, particles, again, mostly protons, but again, including all manner of other things as well. And the typical sources of these are things like supernova explosions in distant parts of the galaxy, as well as the emissions from uh, other stars, uh, sort of more in our neighborhood, as you might say. So although they're called rays, they're not, they're particles. Sadly, the scientist who discovered them was faced with a dilemma. He knew something was happening. He knew it was coming from space. Is it particles or waves? And sadly, the guess was incorrect. The third, this is actually more something that modifies the contents of the solar wind. And that's solar flares. So when our sun has a solar flare, they typically last a, maybe a few minutes, perhaps uh, a few hours at the most. But the particles that these events release are extremely high energy. And we can see that in terms of the 
speed that they have, which means that they might only take 20 to 30 minutes in traveling from the sun to earth. Uh, set that against the fact that light itself takes eight minutes. So these particles are traveling at relativistic velocities. And thus, although they might be tiny, the effective mass they have is far, far larger than you may imagine. And the fourth contributor is a thing called a coronal mass ejection. You can see that in the little picture at the bottom with the arched loop on the side of the sun. That loop, however, is still nonetheless big enough to fit the Earth into it, uh, maybe 10 or 12 times or so. So these are large features. The result of this is that is what will cause the emission of the largest number of particles, but the individual energies tend not to be anything like so high as for the solar flare. With the consequence, their travel speed is around about a thousand miles per hour, and it typically takes maybe two or three days after one of the CMEs before the particles start arriving here on Earth. So we have a little animation that shows the particles coming from the sun towards the Earth. And um, in a little while, we'll ask the question, is it quite like that or is it a bit different? 